The American left has gotten a bad reputation over the years for being soft on the Soviets during the Cold War, on being soft on crime, on being soft on Islamic terror. But maybe it's because they've known all these years the real scourge facing this planet. Soda straws! In fact, San Francisco has even banned cocktail swords and presumably cocktail katanas and even <laughs> cocktail lightsabers not only imagine my surprise at how well prepared you are for cocktail uh, accessories <laughs> <That's right. laughs> hey everybody I'm federal Steve agents Freeland. are outside his door right now <laughs> We're 30 seconds in. I've already lost control of my segment. I'm Steve Green with Bill Whittle and Scott Ott, and this is The Right Angle on the Soda Straw Ban. It's happened in Seattle, in San Francisco, in Santa Barbara, and other cities up and down the left coast. And Frank Luntz noted on Twitter a couple of days ago that the top dozen ocean-polluting countries dump about 22.5 million metric tons of plastic into the sea each year, and America makes up less than 1.5% of that. But Bill, before you scoff, and I know you, you're a scoffer. If every city in the United States were to ban soda straws, we could get that 1.5% down to 1.499999999998%. Isn't that worth it? Yeah, I mean, you know. If you save one plankton, you know, isn't that worth it? <laughs> uh, the, look, plastic in the ocean is a serious threat, and, and it's sure. something that needs to be treated seriously. Uh, but as you point out, the problem for the American left is that we have gone from being the biggest polluter in the world of basically being the smallest. We have, more, we have reduced our carbon emissions more than any other country in the world. And, and it's kind of a, annoying for them. So <laughs> what do they get to do to signal their virtue in a world where we're turning out to be pretty much the most ecologically virtuous large country on the planet? Well, you have to keep escalating, Steve. You have to go further and further and further to get fewer and fewer results. Now, with that said, and with the clear understanding that, yes, plastic in the ocean is a serious problem, one of the reasons that they ban, uh, banned plastic straws here is why they tried to ban plastic bags back in 2014, grocery bags because of the continent-wide island of plastic that exists in the South Pacific Ocean. Yeah. And I think it's extreme. The most interesting thing about the continent-wide uh, uh, island of plastic floating in the Pacific Ocean is that everybody believes in it, and no one's ever shown me a picture of it, <laughs> ever. Uh, you can't get far enough away from it to take a picture. It's so you think, huge, you can, you you'd think, have to take it from another yeah, planet. That's it. Yeah, that's right. Just all you can get is a glint on the horizon from... Now look, again, I want to be crystal clear on this. I'm not saying that it's not a problem. Plastic in the ocean is a problem. It's a serious problem. Yeah. But this idea of a continent-sized ocean of, of plastic bottles that is just floating out there is just taken as, as real by people. And I assure you, if it was really there, we'd be seeing its picture all the time. So, yes, we are contributing 1% of the world's plastics. The problem is not with us. The problem is with China and India and, and all the rest of those uh, funny-sounding people out there. But here's the thing, Steve. It's, all, it's not about the ocean. It's about virtue signaling. It's about showing people how, how morally superior you are. And I'll give you one very quick story about how this ridiculous desire to show how good you are produces negative results. Back in 2014, here in, the, in, in uh, Sherman Oaks, where I live in, in Los Angeles, on January 1st of 2014, I went to the supermarket to get some stuff, and I could not get a plastic bag. It was illegal to sell plastic bags. They had to rush to get these paper bags, and, and if you remember growing up with paper grocery bags, all you have to do is go back to paper grocery bags to realize how miserably awful paper grocery bags yeah. really are. They're just terrible. you got to carry them up here, and they break. They're awful. So... Here's Americans here without any plastic bags in Los Angeles. So to make a long story short, about a year goes by, and then all of a sudden, plastic bags start showing up in supermarkets again. But these are about three times heavier. And the reason that they can have these three times more plastic in them bags is because these plastic bags are reusable plastic bags. <laughs> I've never seen anybody ever use them again, ever. Yeah. It's more plastic, not less. But people want their plastic bags because the people because they're they're damn efficient way to move groceries and the people who are 
banning these things don't they don't buy they don't go out buying groceries think Nancy Pelosi hauls plastic bags from the from the the uh, you know the Safeway to her to her uh, back of her SUV I rather doubt it so this is all just liberal posturing and it's um and it's and it's ridiculous wait, wait till they limit us to 50 gallons of water a house a day which is what the plan is a few years from now yeah uh, and Bill you mentioned those negative outcomes. I just saw another story today that, uh, of course, people with mobility problems, I'm talking especially about quadriplegic, rely on bendy straws to be able to drink at all. And they're going to find these things that they, they can't get them in California, Washington, or, or Oregon my, very soon. My, un my understanding is that, if you, is that if a restaurant provides a plastic straw without the customer asking for it, they're subject to a $1,000 fine per instance. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm that's glad, what I'd heard. I'm glad you brought that up because that gets to uh, our next story. That's that's not uh, California-wide, or at least not yet, but Santa Barbara just passed the toughest anti-straw ordinance in the nation. Uh, uh, they've oh, also right. banned compostable straws. You can't even use paper straws. Uh, punishments of up to $1,000 or six months in jail. And as Bill said, each straw counts as a separate infraction. infraction. So if you're a waiter or a waitress and you bring four <laughs> drinking straws to your four top, that could be two years in jail or uh, or a four thousand dollar fine. Uh, Scott, you're our resident constitutional scholar, or what passes for one around here. What does the Eighth Amendment say about stuff like that? Well, I, I, I'm assuming you're putting this under the category of cruel and unusual punishments. Um, uh, excessive <laughs> bail or fines are prohibited by the eighth. Yes, well, that too. But but I'm just thinking of, you know, the difficulty imposed upon people. I mean, it's one thing to to go to a restaurant as I did. I went to the Trivet Diner in. Uh, in South Whitehall Township, Pennsylvania this morning, and I had a cup of water. Now, believe it or not, I have been an anti-straw guy for a long time, but I'm not trying to infringe upon your right to use a straw. Sure. I just elect to not use a straw, because it just seems silly. Now, when I do use a straw, is when I have a cup that has a gotcha. lid on it that has a small hole in the top of it. <laughs> And I haven't yet figured out how to suck the fluid through that little <laughs> crosshatch perforation in the top of the plastic lid. There's plenty but, of people here in California that can instruct you on I'll that. I bet they can. You know, and when uh, Bill was talking about that uh, that uh, continent-sized island of plastic garbage floating in the ocean, Bill, if that really existed, there would be seven environmentalists living on it until we agreed to do something legislatively or judicially about the problem. Yeah. It would be yeah. they would be afloat on the on the island of garbage. Um, you know, I, I can I'm, I'm all for saying let's not make you know have wasteful habits. Um, and I recycle stuff. I'm always pulling plastic things out of the trash can and moving it over to the recycle bin, even though I know that it, they probably dump it in the same hole in the ground after they the, the refuse people take it away. But I guess I want to back up and ask the question: How does this all get to the ocean? Like, who's taking the garbage to the ocean? Does it all just like somehow roll down the hill and fall into the creek that runs into the river that runs into the ocean? And then, you know, the salmon are impaled on straws as they're trying to swim upstream. I don't, I don't know how it even gets there. Um, yeah, this is, it's another situation, like Bill said, it's, it's virtue signaling, it's posturing, it's trying to make people believe that you're better than you are. And I think when we start getting really serious about stuff like this, when, when those same people say, you know what, I'm not going to use a smartphone anymore because I know the devastating environmental impact they cause. Oh, I'm waiting for that day. I'll, I'll keep my breath. I'll yeah, keep my breath. breath held until that happens. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, folks. You know, this, these laws come to us from the party of science. Well, let me give you a little bit of the science on our drinking straw problem. The uh, this whole thing started up because of this figure going around that there are 500 million soda straws used in this country every day. In other words, your average American uses one and a half or so drinking straws every single day of the year, every yes. year. Well, that 500 million figure is attributed to the National Park Service, and the National Park Service got it from the recycling company EcoCycle. EcoCycle is unable to provide any data about that number, except that they got it from a guy named Milo Kress, and Kress got the number from a survey he did in 2011 of straw companies 
when he was nine years old. <laughs> nine years old. <laughs> The kid's now 17. This is the power of science. Up. Yeah, and I, I, don't, I don't know what he thinks of this mess. He's probably very proud of himself. And it started off as a as, as a measure. This nine-year-old kid saw all these unused straws the getting thrown fair out. He went to McDonald's and decided to do something about it and encourage people to not use straws and for waiters and waitresses to not bring straws unless they ask for them. And that, that seems reasonable. I like conservation. I, I, I like protecting the environment. I want the planet to be pretty. But what we have here is a moral posturing law, not even based on bad science. It's based on non-science, but people get to feel good about it. And in today's age, I guess that's what counts. And that is your right angle on the scourge of soda straws, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. If you like what you see, click on over. We'd love to have you on board. You can become a member, become a producer of high-quality shows just like this one tried to be. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. 